feel like knitting and listening to the Fellowship of the Ring was actually the perfect combination. and thank you for joining me it's Kirsten and we're of course at the start of another weekly vlog and this week is my birthday week well okay by the time you're seeing this my birthday's been and gone honestly I don't I don't have many plans do I have plans my partner's taken me out to theatre on the Friday so that's gonna be fun anyway with that out of the way because it is coming up to my 30th birthday I did say that I was going to read The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien before my 30th birthday so I have until Friday to get this done. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. I'm going to be reading Fellowship of the Ring for the first time and hopefully I like it. I have found an audiobook available on YouTube so I'm going to, I think I'm going to listen to it and read this at the same time. I think it's going to be a much better experience. It's not a massively long book, it's 407 pages but the writing is tiny so we're going to see how I find this. Um, I'm really hoping I like it, really really am, but that, that's the goal this week. However, I do also have a couple of book club picks to read. So we have Electra by Jennifer Saint, this is a reread for me, but I'm part of a book club on Instagram who chose this one for this month's read. Well technically we do it bi-monthly, so you get two months to read the book. So I do want to read this, I do want to annotate it as well, so I wanted to reread this anyway, so this is a perfect excuse to do that, so I want to do that. This is a Greek myth retelling from three perspectives. We have Electra, Clytemestra and Cassandra, all women that were affected by the Trojan War loved this book and I think on reread I'm going to love it even more. So that's that plan and I also have an ebook that I want to pick up for Jan. She has a Patreon and for pay or is it just her normal book club pick? There's a book club pick coming up. I want to read Catherine House so I'm thinking yeah I think that's for her normal book club that she does so I want to read that one and I have it available on Kindle so I'm thinking to read that as well. That's the plans. Is any of this actually going to work? I don't know because I said last week how I was going to start Lord of the Rings and I never did so we'll see. As for today though I need to crack on with a bit of filming. I want to get some stuff done and prepared and editing. That's the plan. Filming and editing and hopefully starting Lord of the Rings. We're going to see how it goes. Let me know if you've ever read Lord of the Rings. I actually, a lot of you have told me that you've actually read this. Some people love it, some people find it a bit overrated. I'm interested to see what I'm going to think and how I'm going to find it, but yeah. So I guess actually let me know what are you reading currently, let me know how you've been, the usual things that I ask. I hope you're all doing really well, but that is it for the start of this. I'm actually keeping it short. Look at me, under four minutes. That rarely ever happens. But yeah, okay, I'm gonna go and we're actually gonna keep it under four minutes and I will catch up with you very soon with my initial reactions to Lord of the Rings. I really, really hope I like it, but I think that's what I'm gonna dedicate this vlog to is that book for certain and then if I need to break it up, I will break it up with Electra. And then when I go back to work, which is later this week, I will then pick up the ebook. I think that's the plan. Why do I feel the need to really plan out all my reading for a week? I don't know, but what can I say? Anyway, thanks for joining and I will catch up with you soon.
Ryan. I have started The Fellowship of the Ring and I'm enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would to be honest. I yeah I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised. I'm up to chapter 5 page 98. I haven't actually been reading this physically. I have been on and off physically reading it alongside an audiobook but I found an audiobook available here on YouTube although it does only seem to be for a first chunk of this book and not all of it. It seems like the rest of it has been taken down for some reason which is a bit of a shame but this particular audiobook is fantastic. It's got a whole cinematic thing goes alongside it so it's not just the narrator narrating it but you've also got music, you've got background noises when there's like a, the party going on and it's fantastic for that and some of it you can really just imagine it from the film and just it's so good I really really like it. Unfortunately as I said it's only part of the book which is ah it's so disappointing. I will try and find another audiobook to do the rest of it because I do think an audiobook for this has been the way to go. It has been a bit overly descriptive at times and it's very different from the actual films. It's a lot slower the things that happen like I can see what's been taken from this book for the film but there are certain things that were never added into the film as you would expect of a book. Very overly descriptive and there's actually a lot of songs in here and I think that's another reason why audiobook is better for me because I find reading songs I don't always get on with that. I'm going to decide at that point whether I just continue on physically or if I'm going to find another audiobook to do the latter half of this. I haven't decided. Um, as it is, it is a very slow audiobook. Like it took me like almost four hours just to read to chapter five. Like it's been an hour a chapter. At the same time I don't mind it too much because it is such a actual theatrical production that's being done so I do think it's worth it for that. But I am enjoying this. As we saw I have also started knitting. I've been wanting, actually let me say this again, my sister got me some knitting needles and yarn for my birthday because I mentioned to her how I've seen some people knitting a blanket and they do a line for every book that they've read which I think is such a good idea. It was from Becca. I'll have her channel linked below as always. It's such a cool idea and I did knit before. I knitted a scarf but this was years and years and years ago and so it took me a lot of practicing last night just to get into the habit of it and I'm also debating whether I want like a patchwork quilt type thing for my blanket so where I do lots of squares like this and then just knit them all together at the end or whether I want to just do an actual blanket and then do like one section like this for the book that I've read and then carry on. I know I want to do multiple colours not loads, probably like three colours altogether, but I don't know. So last night while I was listening to The Fellowship of the Ring, I was just practicing this and it took me a good hour to get the knack of it again. And then I spent a lot of time practicing this, getting the strength right for the knit knitting stitches that I wanted and then I also practiced doing it as a little patch like this and then I also did one where it was a lot longer just to see the sort of thing that I want to do because doing a very long one on these needles is going to be harder to actually sew or knit because of the length of the needle. Don't know if you needed to know all of that but I feel like knitting and listening to The Fellowship of the Ring was actually the perfect combination. This was so good because everything about The Fellowship of the Ring feels really comforting and oh, I used the word yesterday when I was describing it to my partner and I've totally forgotten. It's really annoying because it was like the perfect word for this book but it's just relaxing and it's cozy. It's not anything like it's an epic fantasy yes but it doesn't feel really aggressive or like there's loads going on. It's really slow and plodding and just really nice. And I can't remember the word. If I remember the word, I'm going to put it here and that word is going to encapsulate what I'm feeling for this book, but I cannot remember that word right now. Really, really enjoyable. And yes, there are faults because it's so overly descriptive and I can understand why some people really wouldn't get on with this. And like I said, I myself, if I was physically reading this, would probably find it a bit drawn out in places. However, that being said, 
other parts of this book are written so beautifully well that I think it would carry me through. If I was physically reading it I probably would also annotate this because there have been a few little lines here and there which have just been so lovely. So yeah it's definitely different to the film, like in the film it makes you feel like everything happens in a rush at the beginning, that they're all getting like sent straight off onto this quest with the ring straight away and that's really not the case with this. It takes years and a couple of decades for anything to happen after Bilbo's disappeared. Well, disappeared, like his whole birthday party. If you've seen the films you know what I mean, but, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So that's that one. I forgot to mention that last week I was reading A Life in Our Planet by David Attenborough and I only have a small little section left to go and I would like to get this finished this week as well. So I'm on page 147 and we're learning about what it's going to take to save our planet. 100 pages left to go of this book so I'm thinking I want to finish this this week as well so I might make a little bit of progress with this today and this is looking at David Attenborough's life so the first part is him going over his life, what he's done, working with the BBC etc and then the second part is the vision for the future of what's going to happen if we carry on the way we're going with regards to the way we're treating the planet and our natural resources and so if nothing changes this is the possible outlook and it was terrifying and then this third part that I'm currently in is talking about all the things that we could do to fix it and the things that we are starting to do which hopefully means that we save our planet. This last part seems to be a bit more sciencey so I kind of put it down for a few days but I am wanting to finish it this week so that's the plan this is now the plan I don't think I'm gonna fit Electra into this as well to be honest so I might do that next week if we can get these two done I'd be really happy with that and then obviously an ebook starting tomorrow because I'm back to work tomorrow it's been a really lovely five days off I feel so rested and relaxed and I've got so much done so I'm really really happy with it today I'm going to go get my nails done so I'm very excited about that and I don't have any other plans I'm not sure if I'm going to edit another video I've done so much editing across these few days which is great it's really put me ahead so I just need to decide if I want to do that or if I'm going to dedicate the day to just nails and reading and just enjoying that. So we'll see. But yeah, okay, right. Let's go get my nails done and then I'll catch up with you soon. And I'll probably do a little bit more knitting while I'm listening because that was really good. You'll have to let me know. Have you ever done any knitting? Like, is it something that you like to do? I know a couple of people on my Discord channel were talking about like the arts and crafts that they do. Someone's knitted, like crocheted a bookmark, which was really awesome. And yeah, I don't know, it's good fun. That is me done. we have lots of reading updates to do and I feel like I'm starting to come down with a cold either that or my allergies are playing up today like normally I get like hay fever and dust allergies so I don't know which one's going on but I am not feeling a hundred percent I'm feeling very stuffy so if I sound weird I apologize we have loads of reading updates to do as I said so let's start off with the book that I plan on finishing today and that's a life on our planet this one I've only got 30 pages left so the last couple of days what I've done is read 30 pages at a time for this last section that's really needed because it's been a lot more science heavy and I understand why because it is focusing on the things that we can do to save our planet and it's going into all the explanations the reasons why all of this stuff works works but also the realities of how difficult it's going to be so it's been really interesting but it is um, a bit harder to read however there has been a couple of points which I have enjoyed and so I've tabbed those the interesting takeaways for me because a lot of the stuff to improve our planet is to do with the way we farm animals whether it's land farming or sea farming there have been a couple of takeaways eating a plant-based diet 
mainly is really helpful and beneficial to the planet. I do that anyway, um, I don't tend to eat a lot of meat. I'm not a vegetarian or vegan by any means, but I just don't eat a lot of it. I'm very happy with having a mainly plant-based diet and then I have meat occasionally um, and fish occasionally. David Atta was going on about how that's really important to help the planet and also interestingly empowerment of women which I found a very interesting chapter to read because it's talking about the population of earth and how we're pretty much at max limit. The way to help control that it's actually through things like raising communities out of poverty and empowering women so that they have more choices because research has showed and even just over time it showed that women will have less children if they're given more options than just motherhood and also raising the standards of living means that children don't die so early so again less children are born each year and people are just happier although expensive living is also a big factor in that because it gets more and more expensive the more children you have and so there's a lot of interesting things but yeah I was really quite surprised at the empowerment of women and how that helps balance out the world's population so that it's more of birth and death rate are similar instead of it being so completely different. So yeah, that was really surprising, very interesting, and I have the last 30 pages, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Then I have been reading Lord of the Rings, and I've made some good progress with this, so I'm now up to part two, chapter three, The Ring Goes South, and that's page 272, so we're getting through this quite well. I'm now physically reading this book. My audiobook finished, um, it was only part one that it did, so book one, and then I did find another audiobook on YouTube, it's the same cast, same um, cinematic feel to it, same narrator and everything, however this time it's got adverts in and the last chunk that I was trying to listen to had adverts every five minutes and I just, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I was like, you know what? No, I'm far enough in that I'm happy just to physically read it. And I, I have enjoyed physically reading. So I think what I'm going to do is split this over the next couple days, try and read about 50 pages, maybe, or is it 70 pages that I need to get through a day? And then that will finish up that book for me which will be perfect. If I can get this finished by the end of the week, I am very, very happy. And overall, I am. I am enjoying this book. I think it's really good. There are some parts which I feel are drawn out and can see why they weren't in the film. Also, we've had some mentions of other characters that were never in the film, which I've really enjoyed seeing. So I'm enjoying this book. I think it's a good book. I'm enjoying the way it's written. It does read like a classic book, which is understandable because this is a classic fantasy. And I think it's like the first classic fantasy I've read. On a whole, I prefer classic gothic literature or classic romance like Jane Austen to a classic fantasy. And that could just be because I read a majority of modern fantasy. And so I'm used to the way that's written. Whereas with romance, I don't really touch unless it's a classic. And gothic literature, I don't tend to read horror books like modern day horror books. I read classic horror and I like classic horror more than I do modern horror horror so I find that really interesting how my reading tastes are in terms of like the time that I want to read it from is weird but yeah this is interesting there is a lot of songs in it though like so many songs and it adds a nice atmosphere and a, a feel to the community what's the word the culture in this book and I like that but at the same time I'm not a person that likes reading songs at all uh, so the audiobook was really helpful for that but it is what it is. I do plan on finishing this and I'm enjoying it. And then while I was at work, I started an ebook, which is Catherine House, and I'm about halfway through. Let me get this up. Hang on. So this is by Elizabeth Thomas, and I am on page 126. And I'm enjoying it. Weirdly. Because it's a weird book. It's a really weird book. We're following our main character, Inez, and she is at Catherine House and we realised that she's there, she's got nowhere else to go and she was really surprised that she was accepted into this school anyway. It's very elite, it's very difficult to get into and she is just telling us her experience of being there. Now we know something happened to her in the summer something really dreadful went on and she's kind of running. She That's what she's been doing for a long time. She started off being really good at school, really promising and then 
just went off the rails and she's lost she is so completely lost and that continues at this school even though she's been accepted she is lost she doesn't really focus on her schoolwork she gets caught up with being drunk and partying and stuff at the school but at the same time there's some weird stuff going on at this school and it's not really explained there's this stuff surrounding plasma it's experiments that the school was apparently meant to have stopped that they're still doing and you're seeing how they're starting to experiment on the children but people go into this school because the people that come out of it end up being politicians, movie stars, really big influential people and that's the reason why people go. But it is a weird book. It's kind of like Vita Nostra if you've read that book or I suppose Bunny in terms of the weirdness but not in how it's just a small group of girls that are part of this like cult-like thing. This is a whole school that is being experimented on. So that's why I feel like it's more closely aligns at Vita Nostra because it's, it's very similar in the sense that we have our main characters that have been accepted into this exclusive school and this school is really weird. The things that they get you studying, the things that they get you doing and it's it just is not explained and that's Vita Nostra and I feel like Catherine House is like that. So I'm quite enjoying it because it is a weird book and that is something I have said a few times that I just I really do enjoy a weird book. Something that's unusual that isn't being explained really well that makes you go what on earth am I reading? But at the same time, I feel like there's a lot of underlying things that you can pick out of this that it is commenting on, um, which I find really interesting. So yeah, I'm intrigued to carry on, hoping that I get this finished today. We'll see. It'd be really good if I could get it finished at work. If not, definitely by the end of the week. I say that we're pretty much at the end of the week, but you never know. And yeah, I really am enjoying this one. It's just, it's weird very weird and I can understand why some people just did not get on with this book because nothing really is getting explained and nothing's really happening. There's just this weird thing that's going on and I know I've used weird a heck of a lot but it, it is the only word to describe this book which is of course why I like it. But yeah those are the three books that I'm reading at the minute. I'm gonna have some breakfast and finish this. I want to edit before work. I've got quite a bit of time so I think I'm gonna edit a little bit and then we'll pick up Lord of the Rings and we'll go from there. I will probably update you... I have no idea, actually. Could be tomorrow morning. It could be when I wrap up this vlog on Sunday. I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. Or um, no, or it could be Saturday. I don't know. I don't know why I thought this was a good thing for me to tell you when I'm next updating you, because you don't care. You're going to see it in, like, 30 seconds. Okay, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to eat. And, um, yeah. Um, we're just going to leave it at that. Oh, and I got my nails done, which I'm really pleased with. And I can't get this camera to focus. Can you see this? There we go, I think, maybe, I don't know, I like them, it was fun, it was good, um, anyway, right, yeah, I'm gonna go. After all of that planning about when I'm gonna update, I'm updating the very next day, but I have finished two books since then, so kind of have to. The first book I finished was A Life on Our Planet and I can't remember if I updated that I'd finished this or that I was about to finish it but yeah I finished it and the last 30 pages was more of like a hopeful look at how other countries are starting to do this. We need to work together as a whole planet to do this but we by looking at these other countries we can see how it can be done and so that was kind of the end message. Overall, it was a good read, really informative, definitely something that I needed to read, especially because I mentioned last week how I don't kind of go outside of my bubble. Like, I read, I watch booktube, and that's kind of like, that's it, you know? I don't watch the news. Non-fiction is a really good way for me to get that information that I'm otherwise missing. So, yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this. I think it was a good read. The start of it was definitely my favourite, but it was good. And then I finished... Catherine House. Now Catherine House is definitely a book I'm gonna get physically. Like 100%. It's a really weird read. It really is like Vita Nostra vibes and if you've read Vita Nostra and you enjoyed it I think you would like Catherine House. I think Vita Nostra does it better but it explores everything in a different way. So Catherine House for me we're following this main character who gets enlisted in this elite school which we know because I already said that. She doesn't have the obsession that the school does about plasm. Because of that you're seeing it as an outside perspective of seeing how weird this obsession is 
but you're also seeing the extremes that the school goes to for this obsession, how some students also become really obsessed with it and the experiments that they do and it really does kind of make you think about what is real? What is reality? And I love books like that. I love them when they're mind-bending like that and really make you question what what is real? Like, is this real? Is this reality? Like, I don't know if any of you have those moments where you're just like, is any of this stuff real? Maybe it's just me. But I love books that give me that feeling. It's like an existential crisis, but it's brilliant. And I, and I loved it for that. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book but it is one where the plot doesn't do loads. It is a dark academia book for me because of that obsession with a particular subject and that is kind of dark academia. However, it doesn't have the murder question mark because there is something going on where you could question whether it's there been murder, because it's not actually clear cut. The ending is left to you to decide what happens and I love endings like that. So it's it's more of a question mark as to whether this is actually a murder that's happened or whether it's just experimentation's gone that far but they're not actually... it's an unusual one and I don't want to say too much in case you want to read this book. I liked it. I really liked it. This is going in my weird book collection so I definitely need a physical copy of that and if you have any more weird mind-bending books please let me know because I love them so much. So Bunny, Vita Nostra, The Rabbit Back Literature Society and now Catherine House, all amazingly weird books and I just, I love it. I love it so much. So yeah, I've really enjoyed this one. But yeah, there, there isn't a lot that goes on in terms of plot or character development. A lot of things that people actually want from a book you don't get from this because it is left so open-ended and up to you to decipher and choose what you want and you can choose to take this book at face value or you can dive a bit deeper and maybe I dive too deep but I enjoy it. So yeah. I really liked it so that was a good book. I'm really really pleased I finished that one. Today is my birthday and I got a book from, I believe it's from my brother. He got me Daisy Darker and this is by Alice Feeney and this is a thriller book. I've been seeing this one going around. I'll be interested to see whether I get on with this one. The last adult thriller I read I didn't get on with but I'm really hoping I get on with this one. It's got a daisy on the front and I love daisies so. This one is Daisy Darker's family were as dark as dark can be. When one of them died all of them lied and pretended not to see. I actually really like the rhyming of that. It feels like one of those dark children's rhyming songs that as you get older you realise how dark it is. It's got that same rhythm to it. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. It's going to be really good. And as for the rest of today, I am heading out. We've got a meeting my partner. We're going out for dinner and theatre. I think we're going to see an Agatha Christie one. But of course, it is raining. So every time. Every single time. But I do have another book actually that I picked up at the free library at work and this is Oscar Wilde's The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays and I was so excited to see this one because I want to get Oscar Wilde's works like he's definitely an author that I absolutely love but also it's in the Oxford World Classic Edition which is the edition that I do like to try and collect two main ones that I like to collect and this is one of them and I adore this cover so much it's so beautiful so I'm really excited to read this one I think there is one there's five plays in here which is going to be great. I haven't read any of Oscar Wilde's plays so I'm really intrigued to see what they're going to be like but yeah love it. I am slowly collecting all of Oscar Wilde's works and this was a massive find to have in that collection. I'm so pleased with it. And that is everything so I'll probably catch up with you now at the end of the week once I finally finish Lord of the Rings. I read a little bit more yesterday but it's over by my bed and I can't be bothered to go and get it so safe to say I'm enjoying it and I'm at the point where they've just entered the mines and uh, if you've seen the films then you know what's going to happen or if you've read the book but I've only seen the films and I know it gets deliciously dark so I'm really intrigued to see how it's going to go in book format but that is where I'm up to so I don't have long left to read this book I'm probably going to read a little bit before I head out and hopefully finish it up tomorrow we'll see how that goes but yeah anyway that's it for this update. Really loved Catherine House. Such a good pick. Um, and I think you can see how much I loved it from just how quickly I read it as well. But yeah, it's just, it was good. That was a good time. Right, okay, I've got to go. So I'm going to stop talking.
I have lots and lots of books to haul. I went a little bit crazy on my birthday. Well, to be fair, it's my birthday, it's allowed, and some of these my partner bought me. The first book though, we'll talk about the Locked Library edition. This is the May edition, and I received this yesterday, which I'm so excited about. This is All the Dead Lie Down, and this is by Kari McGauley. This is her first book, so her debut novel, and look how gorgeous this is. I know I showed it off during the unboxing part, but I think it's gorgeous and on the cover you have like these little dead birds and stuff I think it's so beautiful with the beautiful sprayed edges and of course end papers and the foiling such a beautiful book and this one is more of an eerie book I think it's YA not sure on the age range um oh and we also have the ribbon bookmark but this one we're following Marin and Marin is alone in the world until she receives a letter from her mother's best friend and she is a horror writer and she invites Marin over to be a nanny for her two children except the children are really weird like one of them buries her dolls and does like funerals for them the other one does everything to try and drive Marin away and then the eldest comes home and Marin is drawn in by her beautiful ethereal grace and she kind of becomes enraptured in everything that's going on but then weird things start happening she starts seeing dead birds in her room it's it's creepy and it does say the tagline does say sleeping house was very much awake so it's going to be really interesting definitely more of a spooky haunted house vibe and this book is so unbelievably gorgeous so yeah i love this book box subscription i'm so happy with it so yeah, very, very happy to add this one to collection. Oh, and the writing in it is so big. Like, it's amazing. It's gonna be such an easy read. So yeah, I definitely think when I'm feeling the need for that like creepiness, this is gonna be the one, but I feel like it's not gonna be fully gothic, but just enough. So yeah, definitely gonna be reading this one. Maybe in like end of August time would be a good time to read this one, I think. Absolutely beautiful. This one comes out at the end of May, I believe. And that's another thing I like about this locked library it book box because you do get books that are early releases sometimes, which is amazing. So yeah, really, really happy with this one. Absolutely gorgeous. But then we get into the books that I picked up on my birthday, some of which my partner got me, some I bought, and um, a lot of it is manga because I did mention, can't remember when, that I did want to get more manga, that I was really feeling that. I've only got two volumes left out of all the volumes of manga that I have that I haven't read. And so it was something that I really wanted to do is pick up more because I like manga to break break up reading heavier books. If I'm in a bit of a book slump, it's really nice to just pick them up. So I did, I bought quite a few, starting off with this gorgeous, absolutely stunning manga. This is Codename Sailor V, this is volume one, and this is in the Eternal Edition, and I love this so much. It is so beautiful. It is a lot bigger than a normal manga. The I mean, it's just so worth it. Absolutely gorgeous. This is more expensive. I love this. And I'm also tempted to get the Sailor Moon mangas in this Eternal Edition. The edition that I was collecting, they are really hard to find. Like I'm really struggling to find them because I think those ones are going out of print while they do these instead. And so I've decided I'm going to get the whole series in these editions. Like I love them, they're beautiful. So that's what I'm gonna do. More expensive as I say, but I do think this is worth it. And this one, Codename Sailor V, is a newer release. This one only came out a couple years ago. And this is following Sailor Venus before she joined up with Sailor Moon. So looking forward to this, so beautiful. I saw it in the shop and I could not leave it behind. So yeah, I definitely want to get the second volume. There seems to be only two volumes out at the minute of this. I don't know if there's going to be more or not. So I need to get the second volume and then all the Sailor Moon ones. So that's definitely something I'm going to be doing. And then I did get even more manga. So my partner got me a couple of volumes. He got me Dead Man's Wonderland volume two and three. So Dead Man's Wonderland is something that we used to read ages and ages ago, like years ago. He finished out the series and I didn't. I was reading it on my phone. I didn't have any physical copies and I wasn't really sure if manga was my thing. However, I've really been wanting to reread the series and actually finish it. So I have volume one, so then he picked me up two and three so I can actually start and continue my collection of that. I was waiting till I finished out Tokyo Ghoul, 
but Tokyo Ghoul is getting hard to find one particular volume so we decided to start with these which I'm very pleased with that he picked me up and I love how these all line up so it's literally black and white editions on the shelves it's gonna look so good so yeah I'm really excited to get back into this one I honestly don't remember too much about it it was such a long time ago that I read it that I really don't remember much but I remember liking it so we're gonna give that a try and then because it was on the three for two he picked himself up a manga and I then picked up another three so we have Tokyo Ghoul volume 13 I'm missing volume 12 and it's really annoying it doesn't seem to be in print at the minute I don't know what's going on with it but I looked in several different shops and couldn't find it anywhere but decided to get volume 13 because that way when I do get volume 12 I can just finish out the series straight away so that's the plan hopefully getting volume 12 soon I might try and find it second hand to be honest I really enjoy Tokyo Ghoul you've probably seen you talk about this one a lot if you've been on my channel for a while if you haven't we're following a kid who's uh, got one foot in the human world one foot in the ghoul world and ghouls are humans but they need human flesh to survive really interesting really like the dynamics and yeah going to be finishing this one and then I've got to decide whether I want to carry on with the second series I don't know whether we're following different characters or what's going on there but I have heard like a couple of people mention my discord that it is good so I may do that and then we have Promised Neverland volume four so I have the first three so now I've got volume four volume five I'm also struggling to find couldn't find that anywhere and been struggling for a little while I love this one this one we're following a orphanage and turns out that this orphanage is very sinister indeed and I'm gonna leave it there I really am enjoying this one and look forward to continuing on I've read the first two now I need to read the rest but yeah I, I really enjoyed this one this is really good then another manga which I really enjoy but again I'm missing a volume and that is Moriarty the Patriot this is volume four I'm missing volume three I can't find it anywhere I don't know why that happens with manga to be honest I'm not massively in the manga news so I don't know why certain editions get so much harder to find than others this is bought on the premise that eventually I will find volume three and then I can read volume three and four I read the first two I really enjoy it we're following the lead up to Moriarty becoming Professor Moriarty, the arch nemesis of Sherlock Holmes. And I really do enjoy this. It's a really good fun manga. So those were all the mangas that I got. Happy with all of these. I'm so extremely happy with all these. It's gonna be so good. So yeah, I knew that I wanted to do a manga haul and I'm very pleased that I have. There are obviously more editions that I want to get, but they will be got as I can. And then the last book that my partner picked up for me on my birthday is Agatha Christie's The Mouse Trap. This is the 17th, 17th, no, 70th anniversary edition because we went to see The Mouse Trap in theatre. It was so good, so funny as well. A really, really good evening out. And they had this edition for sale. And so he picked this one up for me. This one, beautiful end pages. Um, it has the official script, but it also has some backstage um stories and like the cast characters and things in this so it's gonna be i think this was a really nice memento to have from being in the theater like in the theater going to see the theater show and um, so this is a really nice memento it also comes with a ribbon bookmark really really happy with this this was really good so those are all the books that i have picked up in the last like two days <laughs> so that was great but we have also finished a book so i finished the fellowship of the ring and i really enjoyed this i actually continued on with audiobook so apart from three chapters which was done in one big video which had loads of adverts the rest of it didn't have any adverts and was done as one chapter at a time and so about like 40 to 50 minute long videos and it was so good i love the audiobooks of this like the audiobook that i found for this was so so good i will link the channel below that i found it all through so good so brilliantly acted and i have to admit i think it's the audiobook that brings up this book for me because it felt like a proper cinematic production the book itself I liked and I can definitely see why people fell in love with this series. I will say it's probably a bit overly descriptive and would have taken me a lot longer to read just because of some descriptions and that I feel like weren't needed and like I said several times songs aren't really my thing but listening to it was so well done because then you're listening to the singing and everything and it was so good. So I think these books are fantastic for audiobooks i'm really really pleased so yes finished that one so that brings us to what we've actually read this week so 
finish Lord of the Rings, which was the goal of this week, and I'm so happy I did. And then I also finished out the non-fiction book, the first non-fiction book I finished for the year. And this one was really informative, and I do recommend reading it, but my favourite part was definitely the first part, which I've mentioned. And then the ebook that I read, which is Catherine House, and that was a truly weird and delightful time. So three books finished this week, and several books bought, but it's been a really good time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my thoughts about Lord of the Rings and all sorts. Oh, you have to let me know if you've read any of the manga that I've picked up, like all the usual things. So let me know. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. So I think for this week's emoji, we have to leave a ring in the comments below because Lord of the Rings, you have to. So if you've made it this far, then leave a ring in the comments below and I will leave it there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment. Those three things are really helpful to helping this channel grow. My social media links and anyone I've mentioned will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the very next video.